Okay, Mr. Sonnenberg here. Um, I'm here on screencast, but I'm not here with you in class. Hopefully you're viewing this in class, uh, as I couldn't make it in today. So, what we're talking about today is, uh, again, this is Science 8, the unit cells and cell systems, continuing. Uh, we're talking about Topic 6, body systems and humans. So, we get to look, I really like this topic, we get to look, and I'm just going to brief over this and we'll go more in depth in the next uh, screencast, and I'll put up individual screencasts that talk more in depth about the systems, but we talk in general terms in Science 8, so we have a basic understanding of the different organ systems that are made up within our body, and uh, we've talked about cells and how cells work together to form tissues, and then we have multiple tissues that form our organs. Um, so things such as epithelial tissue, our connective tissues, our muscle tissues, our nerve tissues and that's how our body functions. Now these tissues form these organs and then again organs form organ systems and systems are how living organisms function. So we have to look at the outcome. So we're talking about general outcome 3. We're in, this is where we interpret the healthy function of human being, body systems and illustrate ways to the body reacts to internal and external stimul stimuli. So we're dealing with specific outcome 3.1. So we're describing in general terms body systems for respiration, circulation, digestion, excretion, and sensory awareness. So an example of this is describing how blood is circulated throughout the body to carry oxygen and nutrients to the body's various tissues and organs. So the digestive system, and like I said, I'm going to brief over this information, but we're going to talk about four different um, organ systems within our body. I'll brief over it, I'll show you some diagrams, explain the diagrams a little bit, and just brief over, talk about it so that you have a general understanding, and then we'll show how they connect together and how they're connected in terms of the body, especially things such as the respiratory system and the circulatory system, and, and what the purpose of exhaling carbon dioxide is, and what the purpose of inhaling oxygen is um, in terms of respiratory, our lungs, and for the circulatory, which is kind of our bloodstream. So the digestive system, this is how food enters through the mouth and it passes through our stomach and intestines. So along the way, what happens is it, it enters through our mouth and we chew it. And it forms a ball in our mouth with the salivary, gl or, yeah, the salivary glands and they combine and start breaking down the food. And we chew it up, we chew up the food because we have to remember surface area. So if we want the food to be broken down, then a chemical reaction is going to occur in our stomach. And if that chemical reaction occurs by the catalysts, which are called catalase, in, and there's other enzymes, but catalase, it's going to break down the food. So it needs surface area. So if we chew something up, there's more surface area that the enzymes can, can speed up the chemical reaction and break down the food with. Okay, so basically with this, now that the food, we chew it up and it goes down what's called our esophagus. And our esophagus is a long tube that leads down to our stomach. Once in the stomach, there's acids in our stomach and, and then the food that has made its way to the stomach is actually going to, our stomach's going to churn and it's going to create like a paste. And then that paste is going to lead to our intestine, which is right here. Okay, in the diagram, and I'll show you the diagram as I've explained. So now what happens is along the way, it's broken down into usable, soluble particles that can be used for the different cells. So we break it down and we take what we need from that food and we use it in our cells and in different parts of our body. And then again, then we evacuate the waste. So what happens to all the extra uh, materials that we don't need in our system? We get rid of it. So here's a diagram. I apologize, it's not very good again. But if we just follow the mouse, okay, we take food in, we, we ingest it, okay, and we chew it up in our mouth here. And the salivary glands here are going to produce saliva that's going to mix with it and form a bolus. And then it's going to slide down our esophagus all the way down into our stomach. Now once it's in our stomach, what's going to happen here is the food's going to churn and it's going to mix with acids. Okay, it's going to turn it into a paste and then it's going to make its way into our small intestine where then we take and excrete and we take what we need. Okay, 
And then it goes all through this, oh, where'd my mouse go? Goes all through the large in, or small intestine, makes its way through, which has these little tiny folds in it that has a lot of surface area as well. And you'll talk more about that in high school, but just the, the, the actual physical appearance of the small intestine, if we were to stretch it out, it'd be quite long. But then it makes its way into the large intestine. And then it forms, and this is where more of the solids form, and then they evacuate out our body. Okay, so that's the digestive system, basically, in through our mouth, we take what we can, we use it, and then we excrete the waste, or sorry, we evacuate the waste. Now let's talk about quickly just the respiratory system. So this is the system that, uh, this is how we breathe, we, we, we inhale, so we're, what we're doing is a gas exchange. So we're breathing in air, and we're exchanging these gases. So the main purpose for the respiratory system, which deals with our lungs, okay, and our nasal cavity, and our mouth, is that what happens here is we, the main reason we breathe is not necessarily to inhale oxygen, but it is really to exhale carbon dioxide. So as we want to get rid of this gas, because what it does is it, uh, it skews our pH, so it might increase our, the, our pH level in our body. And we have this thing called homeostasis in our body. So we want our pH to be at a specific, uh, a specific number, okay? And we want to make sure it stays consistent. We want to make sure our body temperature is consistent and our blood sugar levels are consistent as well. And so in order to keep this, this equilibrium about our body or this home, homeostasis, we need to exhale the gases that we don't need in our blood stream. And we need to inhale oxygen because that's also going to oxygenate our blood, which is going to lead into the circulatory system. So we're breathing, and that's the exchange of gases. And what happens is we move air in when we inhale, and we blow air or move air out when we exhale. Okay? So the one is called inhalation. That's when we inhale. So if you take a deep breath in, and then when I blow out, I have a, that's expiration. Okay? And... Uh, we we take in these this air in our and out of our body and that's the respiratory system. So if you take a look here, you can see that we have this nasal cavity, and then we have obviously our our mouth, and so they connect at the back here. Okay, so what happens is we can take air in and exit through here. Same thing through our mouth. Okay, now it goes down through this tube right here called the trachea. And it actually makes its way into our lungs. And we have two lungs. Okay. So now what happens is we have these bronchi right here. And look like little tree branches or roots almost. And we talked about osmosis and plants. Maybe this looks like a root to you. Okay. But each of these have uh, what they do is, is we can take in uh, the oxygen and we want to exhale the carbon dioxide and we take in the oxygen and actually this connects our lungs connect to our uh, to our circulatory system and blood pumps from our heart to our lungs and it's deoxygenated so it's blue looking blue looking blood and then the oxygen we take in here is actually going to uh, oxygenate the blood remember those red blood cells in our connective tissues the the blood they're disc shaped and they have large surface areas so they can catch oxygen so when we breathe in those red blood cells are going to catch the oxygen and then they're transported back to our heart and then our heart's going to pump that oxygenated blood through our arteries to the different extremities in our body okay so that's the respiratory system oops all right, let's talk about the circulatory system. Now, the respiratory system and the circulatory system are very uh, closely connected. So what's going to happen here is uh, just a brief explanation of the circulatory system. Basically, what its job is, it, it's to transport food and gases throughout the body. So uh, how do we get different gases throughout the body, and how do we get different parts of food to fuel our muscles, to fuel our body, and how do we get these and transport them? So it's like a transport system. But just like a circulatory system may be in your house of some sort where, where water circulates in a certain direction, what's going to happen is, is, is the blood is oxygenated. So any blood that or pumps away from the heart 
uh, to the different extremities is going to be oxygenated blood except for when it pumps from the heart to the lungs it's going to be deoxygenated so oxygenated means it has oxygen and deoxygenated blood means it doesn't have oxygen so the oxygenated blood is going to look red so if you were just to take a look at your hand right now and you might see some blue what we call veins in your arm or maybe if you looked at your wrist you'd see some blue but what that is is that's deoxygenated blood so there's no oxygen so the body has used up that oxygen and and now it's on its way back to the heart where it's going to go through the heart and then up to the lungs and then the lungs when we breathe in we take in oxygen that oxygen is going to be collected by the red blood cells remember the disc shaped objects that have the uh, a large surface area to catch oxygen. Once it catches oxygen, it turns red. Okay, and we can talk about uh, eventually uh, why that happens. But again, we're we're talking in general terms in science eight, so we're not going to go too too in depth with that. So circulatory system. This is a very um, you don't need to know everything on this diagram. Don't get scared. So what we see here is we just see how the blood is pumped and all the blue is in your veins and that's deoxygenated and all the red is oxygenated in your arteries and it goes through our body and our muscles use it fills our muscles and then deoxygenated blood comes back all the way up goes to the heart but then from the heart it's going to actually go to the lungs okay and then back to the heart and it's pumped away from the body so this is our circulatory system. Now I'm going to show you another picture of just the heart. Uh, we don't need to know all of this stuff at the moment, but here's a good diagram uh, of the heart. So we have the aorta, pulmonary artery. Okay, and remember artery means it's pumping away from the heart. Okay, and then we have different atrium. And we have the right and left atrium in the heart. And then we have these ventricles, right and left ventricle as well. So these are kind of different chambers of the heart. Okay, and then... Um, the inferior vena cava and descending aorta. So the heart is a very important part of the circulatory system. The heart pumps the blood, right? So a good strong heart means we're going to pump the blood. Then the last uh, organ system we're going to discuss is the excretory system. So this is what filters waste materials from the blood. Okay, so basically we're taking and purifying. It's almost like a purifier, a filter system, right? So what's happening here is we, we look at things like the kidneys, okay? Really important part. And how do we uh, excrete, how do we get rid of uh, waste? So we look here at the urinary system, okay? So what happens here? We filter whatever we can't use we need to get rid of well we can go down into what called the um, into the uh, gallbladder okay and then we can actually uh, exit these materials out of the body okay and so uh, this is how we get rid of uh, with these kidneys and the gallbladder this is how we get rid of uh, waste that we don't need and we excrete them we get rid of them Okay, so uh, that's it for the slideshow uh, or the screencast. Hopefully this has helped. Uh, you can use this to create your notes. It's uh, going to be posted on YouTube. And you can also use this uh, maybe to help you with a little bit of definitions. You can play, pause, rewind, the good thing about these screencasts. Okay, so hopefully this helps. We'll see you on the next screencast.